Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I'm Scott. You're in the prog corner, boys and girls. We got a good one here. We're looking at the fourth album from UK Neo Proggers, This Winter Machine. This is a band started by Al Winter uh, in Leeds in 2016. The very next year, they dropped their first album, uh, The Man Who Never Was. I really, really liked it. Uh, in 2019, the sophomore album drops with a little different lineup. Uh, they have the same bass player and the keyboard player, but uh, everybody else is new, and they drop a Tower of Clocks, a fantastic record. And then those guys leave, and uh, Al has to start up a whole new band. And then in 2021, he drops Kites uh, with the help from Drifting Sons, uh, Pat Sanders, and uh, guest vocals from Pete Jones from Tiger Moth Tales. I absolutely loved it, but you knew that was kind of a transitional album. You knew Pat Sanders wasn't going to be in This Winter Machine. So now we've got album number four. The Clockwork Man, and uh, it's really great. Like I said, they had a lot of changes. All four albums have had a different lineup, although for album number four, we've got the same bass player and the same drummer, but uh, the rest of the guys who left the band after that second album went ahead and formed a new band called Ghost of the Machine, and their 2022 album Scissor Games was outstanding. You had Scott Owens, Graham Garbett, and Andy Milner from uh, that second with this winter machine in the band, joined by Mark Hagen, Stuart McCauley, and the great Charlie Brummeld on vocals, man. So it was kind of like this winter machine with Charlie on vocals. Really cool. Uh, this new album is a concept album. It's their first concept album and it's about a society where they create these drones that live in this domed city. These sexless drones that have no free will at all. Um, and I guess apparently they have like an awakening and they decide they want to fight for their rights and they and they rise up and they riot and they and they demand uh, you know better rights for the clones in this futuristic world. I believe this is based on the 1923 novel of the same name by Evie Audley, but I don't really know. It's a really cool concept and we're prog rockers, man. We love a good concept album, right? So who's in the band now? Like I said, it's Al Winter. He's got the same two dudes uh, from Kites in the rhythm section. So you got Dave Close on bass, Alan Wilson on drums, and now they are joined by Lee Perkins on keyboards and a John Cook on guitar. Man, that guy's good. He's a shredder. I love his style. I love what he brings to the band. A little heavier edge, maybe. A little more keyboard uh, light, a little more guitar heavy on this one. Uh, couple guests. There's a guest singer on one song and a guest uh, guitar player on another. This is released on White Knight Records on October 6th. It's their first for that label. Same label as Tiger Moth Tales. And uh, it's only 51 minutes long. It's eight songs, 51 minutes. So it's a real nice listen. But hey, uh, just a brief word about the album cover by the great Ed Unitsky. If you haven't been paying attention, man, this guy's like the second coming of Roger Dean. His stuff is just incredible. So yeah, Let's get into this album proper. It starts with uh, a song called The River Parts 1 and 2. And this is one that has, uh, you know, a songwriting credit from their old guitar player, uh, Dom Benison, which is really nice because a lot of times, uh, you know, when you leave the band, your, uh, your songwriting credits go, you know, out the window. Uh, but Al Winter, being a good guy, he didn't do that to Dom. He gave him credit on this song. And the next one, uh, The River Parts 1 and 2. Longest song here is like 11 minutes and 18 seconds long. The first part of the song is real up-tempo, fantastic keyboard. Uh, really great futuristic guitar riffs and you know it's, it's just a lot of fun but here I'm you know it's been four albums now with this winter machine and it's taken me this long to figure out who Al sings like I've heard people say he sings like uh, Bruce Sword from Pineapple Thief I don't hear that at all you know who I hear I hear I'm a Deo Passe from Blonde Redhead that especially when Al's hitting the higher notes and he gets a little nasally timbre to his voice. It's awesome, but it does kind of remind me of that cat. The second part of this song slows way down, and it's a real soft piano motif, but really beautiful, talking about, you know, going down the river and whatnot, and it does kind of make me think of the keyboard-driven sections of Genesis, maybe a little Peter Banks moment there, but what a good way to start the record. Next up is uh, Solitude, Silence, and Steam. It's the second longest song, 
uh, on the album. So they're front loading you with the epics, right? And uh, it starts with this really cool bass line, slinky and seductive opening, maybe a little dangerous sound in here. Again, getting some Genesis vibes. Hey, this is Neo Prog, so what do you expect? At the two and a half minute mark, you get this real heavy guitar riff that comes in and you know the vocals are fixing to start. And at the five minute mark, it quiets way down. Makes me think a little bit of Marillion, but here uh, John Cook, the guitar player, shreds a really nice solo on this track. Real good song. Good one-two punch to start the album, man. Next up is a song that the guitar player John Cook wrote. It's only three minutes long. It's called The Final Goodbye, but it's really, really good. Starts out with that bass guitar again, playing a cool line, and then this 80s sounding guitar kicks in. Uh, a lot of this stuff sounds very 80s. This is neo prog, man, you know? So yeah, the 80s is gonna be your reference point as the keyboards flutter in and out. Uh, real good song, short song, but it's great. Next up is uh, a song called Change, and this is where we've got a, a guest vocalist, an individual by the name of Andre Saint. Don't know anything about him. I'm assuming it's a dude, uh, but it's great. You get this cool, like, rocking intro, and then the tape kind of, like, dies out. Like, I got ate by the machine. It's pretty cool. It's a funky uh, song. Kind of spooky, but funky. You're in Phrygian mode, so it gives you that exotic kind of feel. The chorus here is just great, man. It sticks in your craw. I love it. Change is such a good song. Towards the end, you get like this instrumental breakdown and John Cook is doing his best Steve Rothery impression. Really good. Uh, the keyboards on that choral patch just sound awesome. And then when that chorus comes back in right at the end of the song, it's a great moment. It's powerful. Next up is a five minute uh, instrumental called Reflections, written by uh, Lee Perkins and John Cook, the keyboard player and the guitar player. It's a piano driven track, but it goes through a lot of changes, really cool. There's just this awesome guitar pattern in here, real tricky, real fast. John Cook is awesome, man. Very atmospheric track, but this thing rocks. Great, great song. And then you get into, uh, Probably my favorite song on the album. It's called Nothing Lasts Forever. Six minutes long. It's written by Al Winter and John Cook. And uh, it's just a gorgeous melody. Uh, it's built on the old uh, one, six, four chord progression. Uh, but I love it, man. It is so beautiful. The melody here, just fantastic. Um, I guess this is where the clone gets a girlfriend and uh, decides he, he needs to leave her to join the revolution or something. The middle section's cool. It's got the Titanic whistles going on uh, while you're in 5-4 time. Pretty cool. You get a ascending chord progression, which always sounds good. Very powerful and majestic. And it does that uh, for a few times, that four chord ascending progression. And then the final time it hits that fifth chord and you go right back to the beginning melody. Great way to wrap up the song. Phenomenal. Uh, next up is a short little track under four minutes called The Light. This was written by Al Winter, and it's just him and Lee Perkins on, uh, on keyboards. It's soft. It's peaceful. Not a big fan of this track, but I do understand why it's there. You got to have it to set you up for the ultimate, you know, the final track, which is outstanding. It's called Falling Through a Hole in the Sky. It's seven and a half minutes long. Starts with some crowd noise and then an arpeggiated guitar. Then you get this heavy guitar riff at the three minute mark and that finishes you up, takes it all the way to the end of the song with that heavy riff. And then it ends with this uh, clock tower chiming just like the album begins. And uh, then you're wondering, you know, is this the best thing this Winter Machine's ever done? Well, I don't know, man. I'm a huge fan of Kites. I think Kites is probably a little bit better, but this is an outstanding record. And hey, I'm doing away with the, uh, the headphone system. I'm telling you right now, apparently I don't, uh, apparently I'm not a staff writer for the Fire Note anymore, so I'm not doing, uh, you know, the, the headphone system anymore. We're doing a 10-point system here, like I've always wanted to do, and uh, going forward, all my reviews will be on a 10-point system, so how do I score this thing, man? Well, I'm giving it a straight-up 8 out of 10. I really, really like it. 
I wish it covered a little more new ground. I understand you've got a couple new uh, players in the band that are trying to fit in and figure out, you know, their position in the band. But looking at the songwriting credits, it seems very democratic. Seems like Al Winter's got a real good group of people here. Let's hope album number five has the same lineup because I think that's the one thing that's been holding this band back is a little bit of continuity. But uh, anyway, I dig them, man. I'm a big fan, and eight out of ten is my score. Anyway. Anyway, we, I'm working on something really cool here. I can't talk about it yet. Actually, you know how I am. I'm working on a couple things. Uh, but uh, I, I can't wait to announce what we're going to be doing here. Uh, probably the week after next. We'll see. But I'll let you know as soon as it's finalized. It's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, I love you guys. Uh, Sunday prog stream. Uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, this week we're... What's the, what's the topic going to be? What's the subject? Well, I'm calling it, let's talk about yes, baby. Yeah, let's talk about yes. So we're going to be, you know, every one of the live streams kind of devolves into a conversation about yes anyway. So we're just going to, you know, go with it and lean hard into it and do what we do. Anyway, that's Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. I'll see you guys there. Have a great day. I love you. Peace in the Middle East, of course. Free Tibet, obviously. And God save the king. Save King Chucky. Save him. Save that boy. That son of a gun uses some saving. Yes, he does. He needs it. And he's going to get it. I'm telling you. I'll see you punks later.